Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is K1. I unfortunately will not be seeing or showing my face in this video. Sorry, I'm just trying to open up a beer here. It's been a long day, as you can see. I have a beer. And I just got off of work. But I'm here and I will be showing everybody how to dry brush today. Alright, so uh, for today we're going to have an aerial view. It will allow us to show you, or allow me to show you, the model from the top. And uh, basically you'll be seeing what I'm seeing, sort of, just at a slightly different angle. Uh, I do have. Some thing I can listen to while I'm painting this and I have some beer to drink so we're going to get started right away as I mentioned before there's a couple of things that you're gonna need uh, for dry brushing especially it is uh, paper towels you can see I was already uh, making sure all my paints were working basically they're not dried out um, so if you have a couple of paper towels, it's going to be a lot easier so you don't have to go back and forth. Uh, I probably should have gotten the roll. Uh, I also have the mug of water, which is warm, in order to uh, help the paints come off quicker and uh, make the brushes a little bit neater and everything when we're using. I have my brushes, which will be opened up and will be used. So I'm going to take them out of the packaging here which is nice and secure apparently uh, I have not opened this so apparently I don't know what I'm doing ah see they're stuck right here they're all apparently stuck to one part alright well we'll just tear that off and we'll worry about that later uh, something I was not expecting but hey who cares? There's just a couple of paintbrushes, and it's not really a big deal if there's something kind of stuck on it, unless it bothers your grip. Um, you can see here it's got a little bit of whatever that hot glue was used, or whatever it was. So I will just uh, take some of this off. It's not really necessary. Uh, I will play something to listen to. I don't know if you can hear it. If you can, this is a uh, special mix uh, which you can find on the YouTube channel Sanchuk or Sanchuk's official channel. He has uh, made these mixes. Um, when it comes to electronic music this is really the kind of like it's the uh, hardcore techno hardcore techno or uh, hard style as it's called on uh, a different variation. This one is uh, specifically f about uh, DJ Angerfist and uh, some of the uh, mixes that he's done. So, uh, Senchuk has the uh, license to this and I uh, have gotten uh, specific permission to be able to use the mixes and videos that he has on his uh, YouTube channel. So uh, we're going to be listening to that while we uh, paint some of these models here. Um, excuse me while I take a sip of this uh, delicious beer. Oops, I just hit my mug. Which apparently is not cheap because that did not break or crack or anything, so it's rather good. Alright, so when it comes to dry brushing, I have uh, some brown paint I am going to use. Uh, I'll put it uh, over here. You're not going to be able to really see it. It's going to be a little bit out of the way. Right, but we will put it there uh, just so that we have something to work with. Uh, I'm going to use some of these older brushes to uh, put some water in there, which is uh, warm water which is going to thin it down a little bit. We don't want it uh, 
watery with like an ink but we don't want it too thick uh, if you get too much water that's what the uh, paper towel is for or one of the reasons the paper towel is there for and you want to get it to a right consistency where it's not uh, thick and lumpy it's uh, rather smooth right it's not going to really matter much since we're doing dry brushing but uh, we don't really want that much of a lumpy consistency of our paint in case we do need to use it later on all right and then this is a larger model so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a larger flat brush and dry brush this model what's what we're going to do is rather simple like I said it covers a lot of area and it goes by really quick so we're going to take some of the brush here and uh, you can do it on both sides and you don't want to do it too crazy but I guess you can if you want to and if you're uh, a little bit uh, impatient and then what you're going to do is you're just going to brush it on the paper towel that we have here right this is how it gets its name as a uh, tri brushing you brush on the paper towel getting the uh, paint off that you put on there which is why we don't use really that much and then you're going to try and get it off now you see here you rub it on a piece of uh, paper towel that has not been used for brushing off the paint and you see how much you got left and it doesn't look like much but when you go over it what happens is the bristles catch the highlighted area of the model and it helps it stand out from the recessed areas of the model and that is what is going to create the dry brush now this model we're going to do a little bit more of a wet brush so we're going to put some of the paint on here right and then we're just going to go over it now we're not going to take off as much paint because what we want to do is we actually want to paint the model and catch a lot of the surface area so right now we're not so worried about the recessed areas which create an actual shade because this whole thing is going to be brown and this is a dark brown that we are using we can if you want to go further along or if you want to go faster it's just uh, I'm sorry we can actually use a different brush and just uh, go to town with the whole brown and not care whether it gets the recess part or not now uh, what you also want to do right now it's not so important but later on it will be when you're actually doing some highlighting and some uh, uh, dry brushing that will be more for actual show rather than just covering up the base coat which is what we're doing mostly here I don't know if you can see it we have some of the uh, let's see if I can get some more light in here we have some more of the model that you can see here so it's coming out and it's looking like a really dark walnut uh, kind of look to it as you can see here apparently that's not the uh, fault of my volume but it's the actual video itself right so We're going to go over as much as we can uh, quickly, and you can see how quickly the paint has gone. We're going to need some more. Fortunately, we're not mixing a lot of the paint. This is just a straight uh, dark brown that we're using. So not that big of a deal right now right so we want to put it add some little water so it doesn't make it so clumpy it doesn't matter what we do does it 
This money doesn't make it so thick. Don't let us escape. Right? I am tired. Tired of running. Brush some of that off and paint. It's always the same thing over and over. Now, a painted area that is in the, uh, in the paper towel here. I'm sorry. I'm losing my words. Right? And then we go back and get some of the brown right back in there. And then we're going to do a, a really wet dry brush. So you're going to be able to see a lot more here. Right? We want to get as much area as we can. Which is just cover an entire surface area. You can do this, of course, without actually wiping the brush off. Which will help it grab more surface area. Um, I just think you know, there should be a little bit of maybe uh, black or really dark, dark area. Maybe that's a barely been dry brush brown. It creates a nice effect. Uh, shows a little bit more depth to the model. But uh, maybe that's just me. Maybe those are just my own illusions. I don't know. I'm sorry. I am apparently uh, too far out and uh, not quite under the camera. So I'm going to try and get forward a little bit more here. Right, so we're dry brushing. This is a little bit tedious and it does take a little bit of time, but it makes a very good effect. And it's basically just repetition, You're just going over and over. A lot of the areas. Now, as you go along, and you don't have to do the uh, undercoats or base coats or whatever it is, and as you go up to the uh, more surface area, the more detailing, the uh, less repetitive it will be and the quicker it will go because you don't have to do as much, right? So, I'm like you, I get a little bit impatient. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you don't even see it sometimes. I really should uh, just uh, leave my elbows on the desk here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I got finger, I got uh, paint all over my fingers here. So my fingers are just full of paint, but, uh, well, maybe not full of paint, it's just a little bit there. Right? But, uh, that's what happens. Don't worry, it's a lot of basic acrylic. It's, not hard to get off. Just uh, wash your hands real quick, soap, water, and uh, it's not a problem. And uh, the uh, model colors and the Civil water, water based acrylic paints that we have are safe to use. Uh, so, in case they are ingested, uh, I'm not saying that you want to drink a little vial of paint. But in case some of it is ingested, in case someone licks it or something, it's, uh, you know, you have children. It's not hazardous. It's not going to make you sick. Um, some of the paints I have are, will make you sick, and you don't want to use that. Um, if you don't want to use those paints in your home, that's fine. Uh, they sell different variations of it in Citadel and uh, Model Color, which you can use. And they work just as fine, or just as well, I'm sorry, my English is not uh, working right now. Like I said, I've been working all night, and I just got off of work, so I'm a little frazzled at the moment. Hopefully the beer will help take the edge off, and just uh, a little relaxing. Uh, normally I would be able to sit back, but because we're doing this underneath our... Uh, a camera here that we're using. I don't know if you can see it here, but now you can see it's actually brown. Very brown, and you can see in some areas it almost looks black, which is great because you know you're going to a uh, forest. Have you ever been to like the giant redwoods? There's really places that look really dark, and it doesn't look like the lights been hitting it at all in I don't know how long. So I rather like that effect. Reminds me of the woods. As you can see, some of the uh, details are starting to come out because we've uh, not dry brushed it or wet dry brush onto the uh, model. 
right? The wet dry brush works well when you're doing this undercoat, uh, base coat, whatever you want to actually call it, uh, because you don't have to worry about streaks on the uh, model and paint. Um, later on, once you start doing some of the details, you really don't want streaks of paint, right, on your model. So you're going to want to really do that dry brushing technique that we started off with, which is a proper way of doing it. Uh, doing the dry brushing, just not just it, but the dry brushing. Right, so now what I can do is I can add a little bit of white to this and make a uh, a lighter brown color, or I can add some of this uh, what is called snake bite leather, which is a type of brown, depending on uh, what kind of shade or color we want it to have. This is uh, what they call Graveyard Earth, which is almost an ash kind of uh, brownish looking, like you've seen that ash tree, it kind of looks like that. Um, I think, just to show you a little bit of mixing, I'm going to do a little bit of the white. You see there's a little bit of the white. And uh, just because you put that there doesn't mean we're going to use it all. We may, but uh, who knows, right? We're going to see where this comes out first. So I uh, added a little bit of water and I mixed in the brown that I have with some of the white that was just remaining on the brush. And it looks like that made me a little bit too bright for me. I like to do what is called layers. And that is multiple passings of uh, paint on the model. We don't really have to layer dry brushing all that much, but we have some white here which we can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more brown. I'll show you just a really quick version of a layer and painting this model. Right, so it's brown. Back to a little bit of the brownish that we were looking at is just a lot lighter than the uh, dark brown that we started off with, as you can see here, uh, which is a uh, brown called Burnt Umber, right? So we mix a little bit of the uh, Burnt Umber with the uh, Cobalt White, and uh, we get this little mixture of paints here, right? So we can take a little bit of that mixture. Now you want to make sure that your brush is dry. So you want to make sure you find a nice dry piece of uh, of the, the uh, paper towel. You can go over the same parts as you can see here of the brown, kind of uh, mixing it up because believe it or not, there's still some paint there. It's not completely dry. Um, it's not wet by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not completely dry. So like I was saying before on this one, if you want to go from the top to bottom, always top to bottom on the model. It doesn't matter where you're hitting it, the model, or what angle, you always do want to top to bottom because that is your light source. The light is coming from the sun, which is at the top. Right? Unless they're in some other known dimension where light comes in from a different angle, which I am not aware of. Right, so I'm going to make sure I get a large portion of this off my brush, but uh, not too much, so that it's still a little streaky, and it's not powdery, but since we're just putting on a second coat here, it's going to be covered up anyway. As you can see here, there's a little bit of that... Uh, wet dry brush it's a little streaky which is what we're going for right because this is just the second layer of brown that we're going on and right? I'm trying to do this uh, quickly so as you guys don't get bored I know it can be a little bit tedious and then I have to stop for beer drinking <sighs> salut alright so I go 
and uh, still rub out most of the paint that I have. You can see there's still paint right there when I draw it over the uh, paper towel. And we're going to go over some of this part in one direction, always in the one direction, always in the same direction. It's kind of like shaving where you want to do it all in one direction. Right? So this is going to be a quick version. Now I'm going to do lightly on this, right, because uh, it seems to be a little bit wetter and it seems to be catching a lot of the, uh, the paint. So, even though we don't really care too much about streaks at this point, so we'll go over with the next coat. It's still, you don't want to get streaky in the areas that are in shadow because of the recession of the model, or the recessed areas of the model and the way it naturally, the brush naturally falls on the model, of course. Right, so we're going to do that. And put it on there, like that. There. See? Now you can see, you can really start to see some of those highlights in the model, some of the uh, small details in there. Uh, of course, I'm trying not to uh, cover up too much. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this white here that we have, right on our dry brush, right? Mix it in there with our brown hat, which is going to give it now, apparently, this ash color that they were talking about, which I gave you earth. Right. We're going to put it in this dark part of our paper towel, which now you can see darkens it up a little bit. And as we keep doing that, it's going to lighten up this part of the paper towel so it won't be so dark. But, as you can see now, we have a good portion of it off. So we're going to go lightly over some of the areas here that we want highlighted. Because we want a powdery look to it and not a streaky look to it. As you can see here. Right here, right? You got some light coming in. You can see the, the uh, sprite here, the fairy spirit. You can see it's coming in nicely. You have a little bit of a flat tree bunk here, so what we're going to do is we're going to just go across it right here like that. Right? We're just going to go across it like that. Real softly. If you want, you can dab it. A little bit like that, maybe uh, like comes in like that, so you get a nice little surface of where the light is kind of hitting it. All right, so you do that. Maybe the light comes in there this way. You got a little bit of a, a light source coming in from that angle. Light source from the top, of course. This part sticking out, of course, will always get the light. Like this, right? You've got the light coming in. We don't want to forget our paint because it does kind of dry rather quickly now that it's really thin. That's another thing you guys want to remember as you, you use the paint and as it thins out like this, it dries a lot faster. It dries very, very fast. Very, very fast. So you got a lot of these little raised areas, the bumps that catch the light like this right here, see? Now you want it to be powdery, you can see a little bit of this, a little streaky. Which means you just wipe off a little bit of the paint from the brush. And, uh, you should be good. And remember, you want to be nice. Uh, if it seems like it's a little too streaky, you can uh, do a little bit lighter strokes. Kind of just uh, as you can say, caressing the model, uh, just uh, really quick, brief strokes, nice and light. Like that. Now you don't want to get in there too much because remember that part is not being hit by the light. Exactly. So you want to keep your light source where it would be. Right, so your light source could be coming in here at an angle, but still from the top. Right, so you can see more of the face now on here. Right, if you see that, it, it works out rather well. So you can see it's coming in on its own, 
There's a lot of, there's uh, several places here. Sorry. Several places here. Where I'm missing a little bit. So, I can see if I can catch a little bit more of the paint on my brush from there and go over it. What I'm going to do is use some of this grid red earth. Right here and put it down. I did water this down a little bit before we started. Um, because it was a little dry, probably did a little bit too much. But uh, we're going to put it on here. And we're going to run it across this darker brown area. Right? Just run it across in the same direction, both sides of the brush. So you can use both sides of the brush. Alright, now we're going to run it across here, see how much paint we got left on our brush. And then we're going to go at it again with another highlight or another layer of paint on top of this. Right? Not too much, just enough to give it a little bit of a, a color. A highlight. It's going to change the color that we had on the highlight before just a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. So then we go across, you can clearly see the different areas of the model that are being highlighted wood and which ones are or at least should be vines growing out of it and other such things. Maybe there's a, uh, a snake or a worm or something on there. I don't know if I can see it better correctly. Maybe I'm just uh, tripping and they're actually just vines and twigs. Who knows? Um, but in case it's not, you know, we, we can figure that out. So now we're we're pretty much finished with our dry brush. Right. My water is apparently not warm anymore, so it'll be a little bit harder to get the uh, paint off. I wanted to make sure it was warm in case, well not in case, but I knew we were going to go through a lot of the paint and the dry brushing, and uh, after all that, you really want to clean out your brush. That's one thing. You want to make sure you clean out your brushes right away. Because if you don't, they'll get hard like real paintbrushes, or like paintbrushes that you use to paint will get hard, they'll get clunky, and uh, you won't get much juice out of them. So you do want to get as much paint off as the uh, brushes as you can. You see I'm kind of using the same technique for dry brushing as I am for uh, drying off my... Uh, my paintbrush. You see there's still a little bit in there. Uh, maybe I'll keep paint a little bit more right now. Um, I do want to keep that flat edge of the dry brush. That's the whole reason why I got this brush in particular. Right, so I'm going to try and get some more of that. the brush off, or the paint off this brush as much as possible, as much as possible, because uh, we want to get a lot of use out of our brushes, right. so we want to make sure we get that out of the way, as you can see it's pretty much clean now, so this, we're not going to be able to use the dry brush in here until it is actually dry, that is one uh, little drawback about the dry brush is you want to make sure you get all the dry brushing done because you will not be able to use this particular dry brush. I can use a round one and I can use a smaller flat brush to uh, do some dry brushing on that um, but not this one because it is wet and uh, there's a reason why it's called a dry brush obviously. Excuse me guys, you know, take another drink of my beer. So now I have uh, showed you how to properly dry brush a model 
remember you want it to have a powdery look when you're doing the uh, dry brushing or the uh, correct type of dry brushing. Right. Uh, you can see here there's not streaking paint across the model. It looks powdery. It looks, you know, like uh, something you would see in a forest. It, well, not the tree can itself, of course, but the, like a tree that kind of looks like that, basically. So what we're going to do now is, since I did say we were going to paint the entire model, and uh, it hasn't been the whole time, a lot of time for us yet. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you a little bit of uh, detail in here. Alright. Which uh, I will use right here. I'm going to put this down right here. Why not? Alright, put some water in there. Kind of like uh, thin it up a little bit. Uh, I like to use thin layers of paint because you can go over the area a couple times. You do need to let it dry, however, uh, which is one of the setbacks for using really thin layers of paint. This one is not so thin. Uh, if it was thin, you'd be able to see how thin it was. But this one is not so thin, so we're going to wipe off the excess paint here, wipe off the brush entirely. Alright, so I'm going to cut that off entirely and then we're going to just get a little bit right here in the tip. Just the tip. Alright, we're just going to use the tip here. So this is one of the times you say you're just going to use the tip. It's actually going to be true. Alright, and then what we're going to do is we're going to paint this little spray here. Alright, the uh, useless parts is really the part that we want to get at. The... Uh, tar part is uh, really kind of secondary. As you can see, it's thin layer of coat, so in some parts you can see right through it, which is fine because it's going to be uh, painted over with something brighter. Right? So let me just uh, go here and uh, put something on so that we can listen to. Right, so we're gonna go back. My Starbucks is where I get my favorite roast with the perfect amount of room. Sorry about that. Don't need an ad for Starbucks. We probably already have it somewhere. That seems like it was a little bit too much, too thick of a paint. Alright, so we're going to go and uh, water it down as we just did, and then go back in there and paint the details of this little sprite guy, as you can see here. You want to use the edges. You don't have to be that good. If you're not that good at painting small details, just do what I'm doing, and just go in and uh, use the brush to go onto like of uh, the uh, raised areas at an angle so you, the uh, tip of your brush at the edge that has the paint only catches the raised surfaces or just basically the uh, part that you want to paint which in this case is the sprite and you don't want to go over the wood area because uh, then you'd have to go back and paint the wood area but this time you'd have to use a detail brush because you wouldn't be able to dry brush it because well, you're already painting the, uh, the sprite, of course. So, you want to be careful with that. And take off a little bit of excess of it. It's too much water, it's too runny as a paint. And it's too inky, I guess is what the... We call it inks, we call it washes. Uh, inks is a little bit different than a wash. But uh, if it gets too much like a wash, then you just add some more paint to it. But uh, you can see here, I kind of make a little, I guess, submixture of my paints. So I get the consistency that I want. It's not too thin. 
and it's not too thick it goes over the model just right right so you can see here doing the same thing I'm trying to get over on just the surface areas that are raised see right here uh, there's an ear here somewhere I can see it right there Right, so that's some more water so I can get this consistency right. And then let's see, what is that exactly? Is that an arm? That is an arm right there. I'm going to paint that blue and the arm comes around and then kind of gets lost inside the uh, little pocket right there sneaky little bugger but uh, we got it we got it all right so just 